Now, this is one, this is all opinion based. This is not with anything in particular. Thanks, but might be out soon. I just wanted to kind of get your eye, you guys' thoughts on this. And I've, I've kind of given mine on Twitter and things like that. But mm -hmm. why is it so hard for us to give credit where credit is due? As, as fans of certain teams, and the one that I'll harp on is the Bo Nix thing for, uh, for sure. Because it's like you go in there, you play three top 10 teams, then you beat the Raiders. You've had the best game you ever had. You could have had four touchdowns if Troy Franklin didn't drop that pass. <laughs> it's almost like you had a 10% drop rate coming out of the draft. And people still aren't giving you your flowers. Oh, we beat ourselves. Uh, hindsight's always 2020, right? Mm -hmm. But like three touchdowns doesn't tell me exclusively that the Raiders beat themselves. This could go for any other team. It's just like the Jaden Daniels thing. It's he's beating the teams that are in front of him and he's doing a hell of a good job too. Um, you know, the same thing, just like with a, a lot of other guys, like Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold should be number one in the MVP voting. And why is he not? Uh, Baker Mayfield should be up there too, but they're constantly getting trumped by guys like Patrick Mahomes right now. Patrick Mahomes has six touchdowns and six interceptions on the season. <laughs> there should be no reason why he's, even being highlighted in, in the Heisman it's, it's or the, the same MVP thing. conversation. It's the same thing with like college with some of the you know early Heismans. Like, let's be real. There, and you can call me a hater all you want. There should have been no reason that, you know, Carson Beck was even near the Heisman. It's just because of who he plays for. And it's just because of his name. It's the same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is not playing like a damn MVP right now. But it's Patrick Mahomes. It's the Chiefs. You got Chris Collinsworth on his hands and knees right now, praising their names. So, yeah, I mean, why? But why? Why the double standards? I mean, especially now that they're in the NFL, because a lot of people give the excuse that it's any, any given Sunday, right? And you got to yeah. beat the person in front of you. But then when it's a rookie that does it that everybody doesn't like, then it's oh my team, the, our team beat ourselves. What? That dude put up Meanwhile, multiple scores on y'all leading before the draft. When again, we're just using the Raiders as an example, but like for Bo Nix, let's not act like that. The Raiders weren't looking at him for to be the quarterback of the future at some point as well. Like we could talk all they want about like, oh well, AP knew Jaden Daniels when he was a kid. Blah 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 blah. It was the same thing with Brian Johnson with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, you know relations don't matter at the end of the day. NFL is a fucking business. That's all that matters. You could be related to the dude by blood or have known him for care or known him for care, known him for his entire life. It doesn't it's it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the business decision for the Raiders who have like moved up for Jaden Daniels would have been a terrible because you would have had to given up everything. So you look at other guys like Bo Nix, who was there, who could have been there, would have been an easier move for y'all to make. But you lay dormant and didn't. And then yeah. all of a sudden, all that, all that research, all that talk of, you know, in the off season of like, ah, you know, maybe who knows? Cause you know, there was the mix of, well, is Gardner is AOC. No, they're both bad. Let's go with like Bo Nix. All of a sudden, all that just goes out the window because now he's on a rival team. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't, it, it, I don't. It's the, it's the same thing of like, of, um, you know, Oh, Gardner Minshew, he beat the Ravens. The Ravens of all people. Like, we're not actually that bad. This is exactly where, you know, a lot of us thought we would be come this week. 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, all that stuff. This is where a lot of us thought. But then we lose to a rival like one week later, and all of a sudden all narrative has changed. Everything goes out the window. And again, it's not just Raiders. It's it's just this is the example we're using right now. This is for everybody. This is mm -hmm. for Eagles fan. I'll call out my own damn fan base. I don't care. Yeah. It's it's the it's the hype on the season. And then when things don't go exactly what was planned, then it's it's downhill from there. Torx said it's Sam Hartman was right there in the seventh. Spencer Rattler was there for all throughout until the fourth. Now he's, he's starting. Yeah. And don't all, let that dude ball out for New Orleans. 
Mm-hmm. Rattler was there in the fourth, and they took the Cameron Richardson. Thank you, Grizz. <laughs> <in the field. laughs> Bro, I, I I just don't I don't know what what people expect. You know, this is not college anymore. And when people do good in the NFL, you just need to you need to call it out regardless of what your team is. But why do you think that there's there's double standards, Kali, especially with hardcore fans? And how annoyed are you by by shit like this? Get the heart rate up. This I, I think it, it starts with any sort of preconceived notions people have about players or teams in the offseason. Everyone thinks that their team can win a Super Bowl, generally, or that they will make the playoffs. And especially when they lose early on, they aren't ready to just accept that they are not one of the better teams in the league, right? You look at... Uh, preseason rankings in college football. What are they based on? They're not always based on merit. They're based off of projections. They're based off of reputation, right? They're based off of a lot of things that aren't actual play. You look at a team like Florida State. What were they ranked based off of? How well they did last year, right? You look at other teams like... And other teams, you know... And it affects how rankings work in the future, Right? Mm-hmm. If if the ranking started today, I can guarantee you Pittsburgh would be ranked, right? I can guarantee it. And just because like they're they're undefeated right now, right? And then you look at you know th- the rankings week by week, and it's like, oh, where's where's Pittsburgh? They've looked like one of the better teams, you know, even like three weeks in. And I, I guess my point is just that there's these preconceived notions about how good a team or a player should be, and that affects how like your perception of them throughout the season even if that perception doesn't match reality because when you're the san francisco 49ers and you lose to sam darnold and the vikings you're like oh we we beat ourselves like oh we like nine times out of ten we beat them this was just that one time where we don't right because it's sam darnold Mm. without justin jefferson or Jordan Addison, we should have beat them. And it's like, you know, you had chances to win that game, but at what point do you just accept that, hey, Sam Darnold is is a good quarterback? At what point do you realize this is one of the best defenses in the league, right? Like, when when do you just have to reset and toss aside these preconceived you know, notions you have from the offseason or from previous years and just be like, yeah, this, this guy's a good quarterback. This is a good team, right? Yeah. I mean, we had to do we had to do that with Geno Smith a couple years ago when when he played for Seattle and had that big year he had two years ago, right? Like it was the journeyman quarterback for his entire career. Oh, Geno's Geno starting, you no know, Drew Locke, all of these other things, and it's like, well, wait, he just had a really good season, and then at the end of the season, everyone's like, oh, Geno, yes, like he he had a good year. He's a good quarterback, right? The the career journeyman is like he's a good starter now. It's it's just a few weeks in, it might be a sensation, but he doesn't really get the dis- the respect he deserves. It's like, oh, we lost to Geno Smith, man. I'm going to make excuse X, Y, Z. And that's just what it seems like to me. Is It's just people try to justify a result based off of these presumptions they've made. And sometimes that makes you, that leaves you blind to the reality that, Patrick Mahomes should not be an MVP candidate. Shouldn't even be in the conversation right now. Yep. I don't care what the Chiefs record is. They're not winning that because either. of him. Sam Darnold, he should be. Yeah, he has one of the best defenses, but you can't you, – you're telling me that with, uh, with Sam Darnold's numbers and the way he plays and operates that offense that that he shouldn't be in the conversation? They dropped 34 points against Houston, and Houston's a really good team. Like, yep. when you look at all – like, everything – with and you say, all right, new season, right? What's happening right now? Get rid of any off-season, preseason odds, any off-season, preseason expectations. What is happening right now? People need to be able to think like that, and unfortunately, that's just uh, it's not common. It's not mainstream, and that's not how Vegas works. And 
honestly, Vegas doesn't work that way because the general population doesn't work that way, right? I mean, I'm sure everyone in Vegas, as they see people bet on Patrick Mahomes, they're probably laughing. They're like, huh, his odds are the way they are because people will bet on him to win the MVP, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just it, – it bothers me. But I also recognize that it's it's very commonplace and people just need to be able to readjust readjust things because already I'm, you know I'm at the point where it's like with Philadelphia we're we're not as good as we thought we were in the preseason we're not as good as we thought we were after we beat New Orleans right <laughs> that, that game against Tampa Bay was humiliating and revealed a lot about this team the players the coaching staff everything. Don't make me pull up. Don't make me pull up the bleach again. <laughs> Why did it's, I get zoomed in for? Bro, that was a perfect zoom. Too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was not planned. This is not a pre I didn't know what was happening. What the hell? I'm just, I, no, he's talking, I, about, I, he's I, talking I, about the he's talking about the Tampa game, and in my mind, I'm just thinking of the the damn bleach meme that I had in the what the fukes of just drink this. <laughs> No, it's just the fact that like how sad you just looked just now when he was talking about the Eagles, like because I was like, yeah, he's right. <laughs> I'm even wearing the damn hoodie, and I know he's right. <laughs> damn. Yeah, it's at some point you just have to be able to readjust your expectations based off of how you and others are currently playing. Because look, if I simply judged Sam Darnold by the way that he played when he was with the Jets. I would still think that that he is trash and that the Vikings are going to be trash, right? But that's not their current reality. Currently, Sam Darnold is playing like a top five quarterback in this league, and he is playing for one of the best teams in the league currently. May that change in a few weeks? Possibly. Do I have any reason to think that'll change in the next three weeks? No. You got to be able just to call a spade a spade and look around you and see what's happening. And toss aside everything you thought in the preseason because those things, they don't mean anything. The play on the field yeah. right now does. So, what have you done for me lately? That's what they always mm-hmm. say, right? Shout out, shout out to uh, Sam Darnold for helping out all the the, the storm disaster uh, efforts that are going on right now too. I know that he played in Carolina, and that's who got pretty much the the worst of it until. Well, hopefully it's not too bad is what they're saying, but this Category 5 hurricane looks nasty. So prayers to the family out there. Um, Sora got out of there. This dude told it's, me, move to Tampa. We haven't got hit in X amount of years. Yeah, and it's still going around. Like it's. I'm telling you, where I lived at, it would not have hit directly. Uh, have you not seen the storm path, bro? I, brother, yeah, I looked at it. My uncle works for Spectrum; like he has to stay there. What? Yeah, that's nasty work, bro. I would be like, I need that shit in writing, <laughs> and I need you to sign yeah, in no, cold it's, blood it's, with it's... a toothpick. <laughs> that's nasty work. Anyway, shout out to everybody that's going to be going. I think, through that I think at the worst, now. the rest of my homies that stayed probably will just lose like power they're gonna lose more than power bro like, <laughs> it's nasty work i hate to say that but it's not that storm no, is I mean, nasty work, bro. i just listen this is they're we, saying this is probably just, the the most powerful storm in the history of storms bro i saw footage not to get off on the tangent y'all but i saw footage of the dudes that fly the planes out to get yeah. like the temperature to get of the to storm, the eye of the storm. Bruh, they're in the plane just dealing with the turbulent shits flying everywhere. Yeah. And they're just like chilling. He's like, oh, catch my cell phone. <laughs> like, what, brother? Yeah, they showed like the image and it was exactly the same as Matthew. I said, we got we got some issues. <laughs> yeah, it's nasty work, though. Prayers, prayers to all the people, man, because like. Indeed. Psh-